The American cowboy with his wide-brimmed hat, dusty boots, and trusty steed is an enduring symbol of the Old West. Yet beyond the romanticized imagery of cattle drives and showdowns, the daily life of a cowboy was marked by hard work and simple sustenance. In this article, we'll delve into the culinary history of the Old West to uncover what cowboys really ate while traversing the vast and unforgiving frontier. Wild Animals, Rocky Mountain Oysters, and Corn Dodgers The cowboys' diet was similar to that of the pioneers in many respects. While they did possess the advantage of readily available beef, Killing your boss's beef while moving the cattle from one place to the next probably didn't happen often. Instead, cowboys collaborated with the cook to secure sustenance, relying on skills in hunting wild game and fishing en route. Maintaining favor with the cook became paramount for the cowhands, guaranteeing access to satisfying meals. Buffalo, deer, and elk would have provided a lot of meat for a hungry band of cowboys. Wild fowl, too, were a good source of protein, and certainly no one would have turned their nose up at wild turkey or pheasant. Notably, the consumption of animals like skunk, muskrat, and bear, though unconventional by today's standards, underscored the cowboys' adaptability and their utilization of the varied resources available to them on the untamed frontier. During both the prime era of cowboys and the present day, ranchers engage in the practice of castrating young bulls in the spring, effectively transforming them into steers. This is necessary to protect the otherwise hot-tempered bulls from each other and to curb aggressive behavior toward their handlers. But you just can't throw all those testicles away. To avoid wasting food, these residual parts were offered to ravenous cowhands and those with a taste for culinary curiosity. In the bygone days of the Old West, they were cooked over hot coals, forming a distinct culinary tradition. Corn dodgers were also a staple of the Old West. These have resonated with followers of John Wayne and is exemplified in true grit where Rooster Cogburn employs them for target practice. The beauty of corn dodgers is that they can take many different forms. Culinary ingenuity further comes into play as certain cooks opt to carve their corn dodgers into squares. Camp Bread and Fruit What's a cowboy to do when he's hungry and making sourdough bread takes too dang long? He turns to a trusty solution, pan de campo, also recognized as camp bread or cowboy bread. Kent Rollins, a contemporary chuck wagon cook boasting two decades of experience, offers some wisdom on making this easy recipe with only a few ingredients. Whether within the cozy confines of indoors or amidst the great outdoors with a Dutch oven, this method remains accessible. You'll need all-purpose flour, salt, lard, oil, and milk or water to make the dough. Begin by sifting the flour and introducing the salt, giving it a gentle stir. The lard is then blended into the flour using either a spoon or your hands, resulting in a crumbly texture. Following this, a well is formed within the flour amalgamation and to accommodate the oil. Work it into the flour, then add the milk and knead until it is no longer sticky. On the trail, water would serve as a suitable substitute for milk, a pragmatic choice for cowhands. Once the dough is rolled out into a thick circle, it takes place within the Dutch oven. Undergoing baking until achieving a desirable browning on both the upper and lower surfaces. Pretty easy, right? It's likely a pivotal reason behind its popularity among cowboys. Pecan and almond plantations made many nuts that weren't deemed suitable to sell abroad. Small, portable, and nutrient-dense nuts were then therefore popular. Apples were the most common fruit and made up the majority of the dried fruit supply. However, apricots, cherries, peaches, and other fruits would also be available depending on the region, and cowboys used them frequently. 
Mexican cuisine, and rascal stew. Contrary to the portrayal in many old westerns, 20 to 25 percent of cowboys were black, indigenous, or Hispanic background. In fact, according to history, Mexican men were the first cowboys, known as vaqueros, who were the pioneering cattle herders enlisted by Spanish ranchers. It's hardly surprising, then, to uncover that cowboys in South Texas embraced the tantalizing flavors of Tex-Mex cuisine during their cattle drives. To this day, San Antonio continues to host vaquero cook-offs, celebrating the heritage with esteemed recognition for the finest traditional Mexican dishes. Among the distinguishing features of this culinary heritage is pan de campo, a form of flatbread extolled by savour. Alongside this, a feast of fajitas, carne guisada, beans, and chili are also tasty dishes that cowboys back in the day may have enjoyed. Seasoned Pioneers points out that chili con carne was a cowboy staple because the bowl of red stew was filling especially great after grueling days of cattle herding and cheap to make. Beef stew might be familiar, yet a true cowboy culinary experience is incomplete until you've savored the richness of rascal stew. Alternatively known as son of a gun stew is a combination of nearly every part of a calf except the animal's hide, hooves, and horns. Alongside tenderloin, this unique dish boasts an assembly of ingredients including the heart, liver, brains, marrow, gut, tongue, and sweetbreads. The liver, a key component, warrants cautious inclusion to prevent imparting bitterness to the stew. However, the spotlight invariably falls upon the marrow gut, a conduit connecting the stomachs of young, unweaned calves. This enigmatic organ imbues the stew with this distinctive and captivating flavor, defining its identity. Whatever you want to call it, this stew is a prime example of minimizing food waste. Cowboys loved it as it offered a refreshing deviation from their customary fare of beans and bread. At the same time, chuck wagon cooks took pride in their resourcefulness, conjuring a dish that was both delectable and economically mindful. Coffee Coffee was the lifeblood of cowboys, a sentiment that holds true for many of us today. However, could we guzzle down the coffee they drank? Probably not. The rigors of enduring labor-intensive days demanded a strong cup, not the stuff we drink today that's loaded with milk or cream or watered down to make it more palatable. They needed the invigorating power of straight black piping hot coffee. The cowboy's preferred drink of choice? Arbuckles, of course. While Folgers may have been king of coffee for those taking part in the California gold rush, Southwest Cowboys bestowed their preference upon Arbuckles. This preference stemmed from more than just its flavor, however. Each Arbuckles package boasted coupons and, notably, a stick of peppermint candy. For hungry cowboys, that meant the one who ground the beans got the peppermint. That was quite a treat in the Old West. The chuck wagon cooks squeezed every drop of caffeine and flavor they could out of their coffee, piling fresh grounds on the old ones before boiling away. If you're wondering just how strong the cowhands like their java, Western Words provides a recipe. Take two pounds of Arbuckle's coffee, put in enough water to wet it down, boil it for two hours, then throw in a hoss shoe. If the hoss shoe sinks, she ain't ready. Sourdough in addition to coffee and the trusty Dutch oven, a chuck wagon cook's most invaluable companion out on the range was his sourdough starter. While the cowboys congregated around the campfire each evening to spin their tall tales, Cookie found himself engrossed in the care of his sourdough starter. This was before the active dry yeast was produced commercially by Fleischmann's in 1943. Prior to that milestone, sourdough bread was a staple, 
which uses a wild yeast to achieve its signature tangy flavor. The preferences of cowhands were clearly in favor of sourdough biscuits over their buttermilk and baking powder counterparts. A viewpoint corroborated by the cowboy professor from North Carolina State University. The attention-hungry sourdough starter is a mixture of flour and water that absorbs yeast and bacteria from its environment. The type of flour you use in your sourdough starter is very important, as is its cleanliness. Employing clean jars with filtered water becomes crucial to thwart the growth of detrimental bacteria. Initiating the process involves a meticulous melding of all-purpose wheat flour along with water on the first day. The resulting mixture is then fed daily with a mixture of starter, water, and more flour. Neither Cookie nor you would need to feed the starter more than once a week once you get the hang of feeding and storing it. Beans, hard biscuits, and dried fruit were popular. According to insights from True West, pinto beans were the primary choice of cooks on the trail. However, it's likely that they also incorporated other types like kidney beans and white beans. The advantage of using lightweight dried beans lay in their portability and the ease with which they could be soaked throughout the day in the wagon. This facilitated straightforward preparation during the evenings once the crew had settled for the night. Moreover, Dried beans boasted an extended shelf life and are an excellent source of protein, making an incredibly filling meal for cowboys out on the range. Regrettably, there was a drawback, is that beans generally had to be eaten right away, given the absence of reliable refrigeration methods preventing them from turning sour post-cooking was a challenge. Despite the seemingly unexciting nature of plain beans, the cook had a few tricks up his sleeve. It was common practice to cook beans alongside chili peppers, imparting both spice and flavor. The University of Arkansas Division of Agriculture speculates that combining beans and rice with red chili to make the meal stretch further. This approach was essential since catering to the appetites of up to 18 hungry cowboys demanded the cook's utmost efficiency. Although the term hot rocks might evoke images of pilfered gemstones, it actually refers to a type of biscuit, an extraordinarily tough biscuit baked to perfection to eliminate every vestige of moisture. Bushcraft Buddy notes that these biscuits were crafted from just three simple ingredients, flour, water, and salt. The cowboy cook baked the biscuits multiple times until they were rock hard, hence the name Hot Rocks. Although the results remained edible for an extended period, that doesn't mean they were tasty. These hard and brittle bread pieces could be made more palatable by moistening them with liquids like water or milk. Recognized as also hardtack, this type of bread was a staple for soldiers during the Civil War. Dried fruit was a must-have for any well-equipped chuck wagon. It helped to liven up the usual fare, offering a touch of sweetness amidst the more savory array of beans, meat, and bread. Much like many other sustenance items on the frontier era, the prevalent method of preserving fruit was to dry it. This process involved placing the fruit on cheesecloth under the sun, allowing it to gradually shrink and harden. The cook often stewed dried fruit in the morning to enhance breakfast or presented it as a delightful dessert come evening. Pies were also made from stewed fruit. To heighten the fruit's flavor, it was occasionally soaked in water and stewed with sugar. Meat formed a big part of the cowboy diet. Cowboys enjoyed pork often in the form of salt pork, sometimes called sow belly and bacon. As noted by the Tar Heel Junior historian, pork remained a dietary staple from the earliest days of settlers up to the mid-1900s, as it was easy to produce in large quantities. In an era bereft of refrigeration, Meat that the cowboys ate had to be preserved in some way. Cowboys were always on the move, 
conventional refrigeration techniques proved impractical. That's where salting comes in. The process of salting meat to desiccate and conserve it traces back centuries. The simplest form of salting meat is to lay out the pieces of sow belly on the layer of salt and then cover it with more salt, allowing the meat to desiccate over time. Another method of salting, mentioned in Miss Beecher's domestic receipt book, published in 1846, entailed layering salt and pork within a barrel until full, then soaking it all in pickle brine. Beef jerky helped cowboys sustain their energy on long cattle drives. They also relished various types of jerky fashioned from diverse meat. According to History Hit, smoked beef jerky was the most common way cowboys consumed beef. Its prevalence could be attributed to its prolonged shelf life compared to fresh beef, and it could be added to stews. As the cowboy era burgeoned in the late 1800s across the American West, the tradition of jerky consumptions extended far back in history, spanning hundreds of years. During those times, jerky was made by using a variety of techniques to cure, smoke, and dry the meat. The elements of sun, smoke, wind, and salt were all methods that were used to create this shelf-stable meat. Florida Raised reports that beef jerky is made nearly the same way today. Nevertheless, the cowboy version was drier, more brittle, and considerably more pronounced saltiness. Native Americans also has been making pemmican, bars made from dried meat like venison or bison, nuts and berries, for centuries. The cowboys enjoyed them too, as it was a sought-after trading commodity during encounters with indigenous communities, forging a connection between their culinary preferences. Please like and share if you find the video content interesting and useful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and comment below so as not to miss the upcoming interesting videos. Thanks for watching.